All right, welcome to a new series we have called Shifting to Solids. Um, if you followed along in our last series on shape orientation, you would have learned all our 2D tools. So now we're going to jump into the three dimensional realm. So um, in that series, we talked in on shape orientation, we talked like you always need to start with a sketch. Um, and for 3D, you need to have some sort of sketch geometry made. So today I'm going to walk you through how to do a sketch and then we'll go from nothing to a 3D model. Um, but for the future episodes of this, what we're going to do is just have some sketches already gone, uh, drawn up and we'll go from there. So if you follow me up top over here, we will go to our sketch. Again, if you followed along last time, pressing shift and S will start that uh, and then click your plane letter N to hide uh, to normalize your view and letter P to hide those planes. So um, everything we're going to do today, we're going to have some geometry already drawn. Um, I'll show you this drawing that I have up here is what I'm going to create right now. If uh, you've ever been a part of any of my classes, students or adults, um, this is the first drawing we do after you figure out how to draw some lines. So the idea here is to do this with only using the line tool. Um, there's faster ways to do it and I can show that another time, but we're gonna start in this corner at the origin. So if we take a look here, we're gonna go out 0.75, up 1.5, over, and then we're gonna work this shape around, okay? So let's go back to our drawing. So we'll start with that line tool. We'll go from here out, 0.75, we'll go up 1.5, over that 0.75, up 1.75, over 4, down 1.5, over 2, down 2, over 2, down, over, that needs to be four, and that should be a distance from bottom to top of five, so it will fix those pieces for us. So, once we finish our 2D sketch, you'll notice I get a polygon that I can click and turn yellow. Um, once I have that, I need to go 3D. So we're used to seeing everything in 2D and you'll see all these 2D toolbars that we've done. We've gone over all those features in the on-shape orientation deal, but in our new series, we're gonna focus on 3D tools. In your regular sketch drawing, you'll see we have the extrude tool and the revolve tool here. Those are two of the most common extrude or um, 3D tools that exist that's why they keep them here because they figured hey once you finish your drawing you're probably going to want to make something else out of it you want to go 3d you want to do something else um but for us what we want to do is click the green check mark and you'll see now my sketch is complete and my toolbar changed again and i no longer have those 2d tools they all have turned into 3d tools um, a lot of my students struggle when they see this, they freak out. They're like, oh, I need to go back and change this dimension. No big deal. Go back to where your sketch name is. Double click on it. It'll open you back up in this view. So um, press that green check mark. And now we're going to go to the extrude tool. So sketch right next to it. Like always, if we hover over it, it's going to tell us extrude. And it's a like a... a small black box and a white box. The shortcut key for that is going to be the letter uh, key shift and E it says create, add to or subtract from or intersect parts by extruding sketch regions or planar faces, surfaces by extruding lines or curves or thin parts by extruding sketch regions, planar faces, lines or curves. So what I'm going to show today is kind of how to take some geometry and then step it up, level it up, how you can go through and it will Kind of be smart and it'll change how it goes so for starters let's do that shift and e one of the reasons i wanted to call this uh shift into solids was because we are literally pressing that shift key multiple times to be able to shift and go into those solid features so once i have my 
tool selected, you'll see I have solid surface thin new add remove intersect. Um, but it's asking me right now why it's red up here. It's asking me for faces and sketch regions to extrude. So first off, I need to click that inside geometry. The default is going to set itself at one inch. And if I kind of rotate my view a little bit, you will see that now that 2D sketch has 3D geometry. I'm starting to have that third dimension. Okay. Well, I don't want it to be one inch. I need it to be five inches. So go ahead and click that depth and change it to five. Okay. It's going to make me a new face. It's going to make me the new part. And you'll see down here, we zoom in down here to my parts list. You'll see I have a part number one made now because I have some 3D geometry. Okay. Um, let's say I wanted it to go the other direction. Okay. We'll turn my planes back on. I don't want it to go above my top plane. I want it to go below my top plane. So how would I do that? I click the direction of that arrow. We can flip that. Um, if I give it a direction, I could tell it an extrude direction. This is kind of when you got, start getting some, some different geometry using that, that mate connector. Um, maybe I want it to have an offset. So I want it to go five inches, but I actually want it to be an inch off of that plane that I originally draw, drew it. Or maybe I want it an inch below that surface. Maybe I need it to go an inch down and then four inches up for a total of five. Um, you could do it like that. One of my favorite tools is to use this symmetric. Um, if you've ever done any of the, the challenges or the eSport uh, drawings with Toby on twotalltoby.com, a lot of his drawings are symmetrical and this kind of helps you get that um, there. So symmetrical, it's gonna take that five and it's gonna give me two and a half in each direction without me having to do two extrusions. And my draft, if I were to do draft, you will see that it'll give it an angle of a certain degree measurement. So if I wanted, let's see, I wanted that to be at a 45 degree angle. It's a lot. It's kind of, let's go like a one degree draft. We'll go five. You'll see that it's, it's that same geometry on the bottom, but it, it drafts out. And that black rectangle or that shaded region on the top kind of looks like a shell is our original geometry from the bottom. So um, typically don't use a whole lot of drafting uh, in that aspect. For me, most of the time, I'm only using my depth and symmetrical. Um, but as far as depth goes, I have all these different features here. So we have blind, up to next, up to face, up to part, up to vertex, and through all. Uh, what do those mean? Well, we'll show you with some examples. So you need some other geometry for up to next, up to face, up to part, up to vertex you could do, but then through all is kind of when we talk about holes. So right now we have a shape. So we're going to leave it at five inches and we're going to say, okay, turn my planes off and you'll see now I have a nice solid shape based off of my origin. Now, when we first started drawing in that on shape orientation, I told you, you need to pick one of the planes to draw on. You need to figure out where you want to draw, right? Every surface of this shape now is a canvas that I can draw on. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to draw a set of circles and some geometry on this back plane, backside face of this shape. So shift S normalize and I'm just going to draw a circle real quick right here in the middle and let's just make it three. Now you can see that that geometry lives on the side of that piece. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to cut that piece out. So not only do we use extrude to add pieces, I can use it to remove. So let's say I picked both of these pieces and I wanted to remove all the way through. Okay. I could drag and just slide that across and give it whatever measurement. But if I wanted to use up to next, 
I could click the face. The problem is the next face it hits is there. So up to next won't work here. Up to face, I could tell it, hey, I want to go up to this face and stop at that face. Or I could delete that and say, go up to this face and it'll go through all three. Okay. If I did up to part, it won't work because this is the same part. But what I can do is through all and it'll automatically go through everything. Okay. Now, when you come down here with this merge scope, I want to go through everything in part one. If I had another part behind it, I could choose whether I wanted that hole to go all the way through or not, but it's not necessarily uh, necessary if it doesn't need it. Maybe there's something that does have that hole go all the way through, but in this aspect, maybe it doesn't. So I'm going to have that hole go all the way through. And you'll see now we start cutting apart some more geometry. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on another sketch, but this time I'm going to draw it on the inside of this piece. And I'm just going to draw a circle kind of right there. Call it 0.5. And I'm going to show you how this piece works for a up to face or up to next, right? In this aspect, up to next, it's just going to go when it hits that next face. Um, but this time I'm using the add feature. If I did remove, you'll see up to next goes the other direction and it tries to cut a hole through that in, in that way. I could flip directions and you'll see that it doesn't, it's trying to remove something that's already removed. So you'll see it turns red and it's like, Hey, that, that ain't going to work. Oh, I'm stuck on the remove. I needed to be an add. Okay, here we go. This is what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, if I wanted an offset, a draft, you know, different things that we'd need to do, like we talked about. Um, but this is kind of where it lives. So new and add is going to be what we're doing. Um, yes, I know there is our uh, intersect surface and thin we have all these options here uh, for today i just want to focus on the basic parts of the extrude command and this is what we're talking about okay so going from your basic line tools and line geometry into some 3d parts you'll get this shape and you'll be able to extrude add remove and do whatever you need to okay um some things to notice though is if i have my shape here and we go back to my first sketch, I could draw those circles like I did and do the step all that way, but I could also go back to my first step and just draw a circle right in here. And when I go back, you'll see that it adds it to the timeline. And now I have a hole bored through the center of this without having to go through and extrude multiple times. So if you plan ahead when you draw your sketches, you can do a few things. Um, to make that a little easier. I know for here, I can round these corners by doing the fillet command. And if I did it in here in the sketch versus doing it as a 3D feature, I don't have to do as many options. So again, if you're doing this as a job and you're getting piece rate or you're trying to get as many things done as you can, or you're in a competition or whatever, you're going to be able to do this in a way to optimize your time and make it as quick as possible. Now there's some times where some of these, these faces don't exist until you've done an extrusion and that's fine. And some people like to work in a way where they do every single thing and they can look along the, the feature tree on the left-hand side and see exactly what they were doing either right or wrong to make sure they have like a checklist of everything they needed to do along the way. So uh, that's pretty much it, much it for uh, extrude the basic side of things. Like I said, if you look at that menu, there is so many things we could do with surface, thin, um, changing it different thicknesses. It's, it's a pretty cool and intuitive tool. However, um, for basics to get this down, we're going to start with extrude basics and then we will revisit extrude later on. I want people to be able to get uh, drawing with some things. I've seen uh, a lot of you guys going through my packets and going through my trainings and going through my drawings and whatnot. 
and they're doing really good. And I feel like if I spend too much time on one specific topic, they're never going to get and start moving and playing with these tools. So I'd rather eat you guys out there playing and doing that and getting things going. So that's going to do it for us today um, on not our on shape orientation. It's our shifting to solids. So um, get used to seeing that. Uh, we'll like always, like we did an on shape orientation, we are going to go through. So next week we'll hit revolve start moving to sweep loft we will go through all of these tools up here some of them are pretty repetitive you know the transform tool the array tool the mirror tool those pretty much do the same thing that they did in the 2d version but it's going to jump out and be uh, uh with 3d models so a little bit of some differences but all in all it's pretty much the same thing um so again thank you all to anybody uh, any of you guys who were in my training this last weekend um i hope you guys learned a lot Hopefully this will get something for you guys as well. Um, if you are another teacher or you know somebody who wants a training, let me know. Uh, all my info's in the, in the description and stuff. Um, if you're a student that needs help because now those teachers are giving you some stuff, shoot me an email and uh, I'll see what I can do to help you out. Um, but that's gonna do it for us. So keep on keeping on, keep the stuff drawing and I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Thanks.